Greetings folks, Fuzz here, welcome to another Jurassic World Evolution video. Today I want to talk a little bit about the second island. This is Island Murata, I think it's called, or Murata, or something along those lines. Uh, Jeff Goldblum is better at pronouncing these island names than I am. But I noticed on Reddit and a few other places that people have been struggling with this particular island, in particular with the Velociraptors. I've seen memes and all sorts about how you need 10 fences in order to actually house these guys. And to be honest, it's not as tricky as you think. I've done a bit of playing about and I seem to have a good system set up. So I'm going to just uh, explain that to you. But also we're going to have a go at doing this mission as well, Survival of the Fittest. Which does lead to other unlocks, so it is important to do. But Dilophosaurus and Velociraptor, they do not get on well together. But we'll have a look at all that today, so hopefully this video is going to help you. In particular with the second mission, or the second island rather. And you shouldn't have any issues with it then. Alright guys, let's get started. Just before we get started then guys, I'm interested in hearing what your opinions are of Jurassic World Evolution so far. I've got to be honest, at first I was, I was enjoying it, but it was like, mm, I wonder how long I'll be playing this for. Uh, but I've actually really got into it. And to be fair, time absolutely flies when I'm playing this game. I'll literally, you know, come on the game to do a few things. And then, without even realising it, an hour's gone by. And I'm thinking, what have I actually got done in this hour? I cannot believe that's how long I've been playing for. But yeah, guys, please do share your thoughts about what you think of Jurassic World Evolution in the comments section. There's certainly a few improvements I would like to see being made to this game, however that said. But we'll see how Frontier responds to some of the fan feedback going forward. This game has only just come out, of course, so uh, we'll just need to give them a bit of time on that. Uh, but anyway then, guys, let's get started. So, as I mentioned, a few people have been struggling with the Velociraptors, and they are feisty little things. I mean, of course, if you've seen the movies, you know what I'm talking about. And I love the way that they just run all over the place and have the Velociraptor sounds from the films. That, you know, just very, very reminiscent of those movies. Uh, but that includes the fact that they are aggressive, and you do have to be very particular with how you house these guys. You can't just go plonking them in with a bunch of other uh, meat-eating dinosaurs and expect everything to go smoothly, it won't. But, as long as you know what you're doing here, and I'm going to give you some tips, then you should be able to get a good display of raptors without any issues at all, or very few issues. Okay, so I've done quite a bit of experimentation with how it is that you can house raptors, but before we talk about the actual combinations of other dinosaurs that can go with these guys, let's just talk about their needs. In case you don't know, each dinosaur species will have its own set of needs, and by the way, I haven't progressed from island number two yet so everything you see in my park is what's available to research up until this point i haven't gone ahead unlocked other stuff and then brought it back here but let's just have a look at the dinosaurs needs you can see in particular their social tab at the bottom is very very narrow with the amount of blue that the uh, marker has to be located in and i think this is what a lot of people are missing they're creating dinosaurs and not really paying attention to these kinds of stats and it's very important because if these bars start to go into the red, that's when your animals are going to be unhappy, they're going to be breaking out, they're going to be smashing through fences and just causing general havoc amongst the park. And of course, these being raptors, when these guys escape, they're going to do cause a lot of carnage amongst the guests and kill a lot of people before you generally get the situation under control. So it's very, very important you do pay attention to the needs of all of your dinosaurs in particular, these raptors, they're very, uh, you know, nervous creatures. As you can see, this guy here was panicking then for no reason at all, it seemed. There's nobody around here to cause him to do that. Uh, but all his icons, all his markers rather, are in the blue. So, in order to keep the raptors social tab, or social bar in the blue, which is that very narrow bit of blue that you saw at the bottom there, and we'll just check this guy as well. Let's just talk about what social is, compare that to population. Population is the total amount of dinosaurs in the same pen as this dinosaur, of any species. Social is how many dinosaurs of the same species as the one that you're looking at. So in this case, this raptor is uh, fairly happy to have other dinosaur species, as in like, you know, more dinosaurs in the pen, but... He's very specific with the fact that you need uh, a small amount of other raptors in with him. So they are social creatures, they are pack creatures, uh, but they don't want too many in the pack, 
Otherwise, you're very easily going to bring that bottom bar into the red. So I've currently got uh, two raptors, I think. I'll just check that. Uh, if we press triangle, we can open up the main overhead map here, which is really helpful, actually. Make sure you use this. Uh, we can see we've got three raptors. So I'd probably put another one or two raptors in, and that wouldn't be a big problem. This guy over here is not a raptor. Hang on. One, two... Okay, there we go. Three raptors, yeah. And this guy here is not actually a raptor. It's a Metria canathosaurus or something along those lines. So another meat-eating dinosaur. But one that the raptors are happy to put up with, actually. So this is one species you can keep in the same pen. It's important to have a variety of species because that's going to improve your dinosaur rating, which is very important to improving your island rating. So the more species you can put in together, the better. Now, that's easier with herbivores because you can generally mix and match the species there without too many issues. But with the carnivores here, you do have to be careful which species you mix together. And the raptors in particular are very, very nervous of other dinosaurs. But this species here, the Metriacanthosaurus, which is available on the second island, is one that they will put up with. Now, on the other hand, the Dilophosaurus is a species they definitely will not put up with. Okay, I've tried multiple uh, different genes with these guys, mixing them and matching them together, and they inevitably always end up fighting, and you're going to have dinosaurs being killed very, very quickly if you try and mix the raptors and the Dilophosaurus together. Just zooming out to the map again then, originally this was all one large pen I created to house my carnivores, uh, but once I quickly discovered there's no way to have the Velociraptors and Dilophosaurus in one pen, I did just fence this off down the, roughly down the middle here, made sure that each side had water, and feeders and at that point I was able to separate the Dilophosaurus and the raptors and that seemed to cease all the issues I was facing. Now fencing doesn't seem to be all that important in my experience. What I'm using here is lighter electrical fencing but here you can see I've actually just got normal weak standard fencing and I've had this up for a long long time and there's never been an issue with it. It's never once been broken. Now, a couple of times during storms and what have you, there are plenty of storms on this particular island. Some of these other fences have uh, lost power and the raptors have broken through them because they've been scared of the storm and have had to quickly fix them. But outside of that, in terms of the actual dinosaurs interacting together and what have you, there's not been a problem with even using this weak fence. Now, I've only got one Hammond Creation Lab in this area, but that's no problem either. The fences are very cheap. So all I tend to do, say I want to breed another raptor over here, rather than using the ACU helicopter to stun it when it goes in with the Dilophosaurus uh, and then moving it across, I tend to just build another fence here, delete this piece of fence, let the raptor go into this pen and then just add this piece of fence back in and delete the extra bit I added in. It takes a few seconds, but it's an easy way of just getting away with using one Hammond Creation Lab while also splitting off your dinosaurs. Okay, so... If you do what I've just said there, then raptors won't be a problem and they will bring a lot of reputation and a lot of money into your park. These guys are awesome at doing that. But the other thing, as you can see here, is the mission, Survival of the Fittest, which is the uh, security mission. I was going to say science, but it's security. Actually requires us to incubate and release a Dilophosaurus and a Velociraptor together in the same pen. And I've already explained, of course, that that isn't going to end well. So, here's the way I'm going to do this mission. I'm not sure exactly how this is going to end up, because I haven't done it yet, how the game wants it to end up. But I'm assuming that it's not going to end well for both dinosaurs. So I don't just want to release a Dilophosaurus and a Velociraptor in here, because it could end up causing havoc on my other dinosaurs. And same true in this section, I don't want to release a Velociraptor in here, because it's going to just wreak havoc on all of my Dilophosaurus. So what I'm going to do is build another temporary fencing, uh, fencing system around here, creating a very small enclosure. It won't satisfy the dinosaur's needs, but hopefully it will be just enough to satisfy the requirements for the mission. And to prepare, I've already created a Dilophosaurus, which is ready to go here. I'm going to go ahead and create a Velociraptor as well. And you can just use the basic genome. Don't add anything to it for the purposes of the mission. And I'm going to wait for both the Dilophosaurus and the Velociraptor to be ready. I'm going to build my extra fence and then we'll release them both together. So hopefully we'll be able to complete this mission quickly. 
Oh, I just had a nightmare situation where we had a nasty storm. The raptors managed to escape through the fences. Guests started dying. Oh, it was horrendous, but I think I've managed to get on top of it all now. So let's carry on with where we left off. So what I'm going to do at this point is build a fence here. And I'm just going to use the light steel fence. And we'll connect it there. We'll then go ahead and release both dinosaurs, the Dilophosaurus and, of course, the Velociraptor. Both will be limited to this fence, so they will then fight each other, which is pretty much what we want. And this is where we need to be pretty fast as well, because the next update after they've had their fight is that the surviving dinosaur has to stay in its pen for, I think, it's five minutes uh, without escaping. So as soon as we know who the surviving dinosaur is, they're not going to want to stay in this little pen. We need to delete the correct part of the fence so they can be housed with the rest of their kind, with water and food, etc, etc. Or you can go ahead and use the ACU helicopter to shoot at the surviving dinosaur. So anyway, here comes the fight now. to observe this interaction. Uh, I think you mean slaughter? You believe in nature, don't you, Dr. Malcolm? We are simply enabling it. No, you're manipulating it. The outcome <laughs> of your actions cannot be known. I thought you liked Oh, Jeff Goldblum's awesome. Proceed with the test. I love the attention to detail here, the way the Dilophosaurus opens its crest and spits its venom. All completely fictional, of course. There's actually uh, nothing to suggest they would have done that in real life. So, I'm almost certain the Dilophosaurus is going to lose this fight. The Velociraptor is usually successful, from my own experience and testing. Although you never know. Okay, it's at the end of the Dilophosaurus. I'd say it is. Right, so we're very quickly then at this point going to go to demolish mode and delete this fence here. And then what I'm going to do, just to be on the safe side, is call the helicopter. Let's keep him safe. Oh, no, no need. I was going to tranquilize this guy. But it looks like he's found his own way out. So we're going to go ahead and remove the dead body here. So to do that, we use the transport helicopter. Just select the dead dinosaur. And the trick is, guys, you've got to be quick with deleting your fence and making sure that the surviving dinosaur gets into a proper enclosure that's going to increase its comfort. Otherwise, it's going to be wanting to escape very, very quickly. And I think it was this one, wasn't it? So look at that, it's comfort and health are already back up to full. Which is pretty good. So since we're done with the main objective here, what I'm going to do is go ahead now and just sort my fence back out. Commencing asset transit. So we'll connect up there. And just delete this irrelevant bit of fencing. There we go, so our enclosures are now back to normal. Our dinosaurs are happy, and I don't see any reason why this Velociraptor that survived, number three it was, this one, uh, will not be able to stay in the enclosure now for just under four minutes. Right, my bad, I made a slight mistake. It's not number three, it's Velociraptor number four that had the fight, and its health is very low. So as soon as you've got the Velociraptor in the correct paddock, Make sure you immediately assign the Rangers as many teams as you've got to come and heal that one back up. Because if it stays at low health, it's either going to die, because while a dinosaur is in red health, it can die at any point. Or it's going to become agitated and break through the fence. And in fact, after a little test, in my case, the dinosaur does become agitated. So I've reloaded the game and just reinforced the fence that it broke through. So hopefully, if it does do it again, it will try at the same place and it will still be enclosed in the paddock. That's the theory at the moment anyway. And also be a little bit cautious because a dinosaur at low health has a tendency to get picked on by the other dinosaurs in the same paddock, which obviously 
uh, is something we want to avoid because that's going to put it into agitated state even quicker. Which means that we are right now at the mercy of our rangers to get here as quickly as possible and start healing this lady back up. Uh, but she's also going to need to eat and drink because of that fight. Her nourishment is very, very low. So there's only going to be so much that the rangers can do, but they're going to give her a good boost to health, which is obviously very, very important here. And I was going to trank some of the other dinosaurs in this pen so that they can stay away. But I didn't think it was necessary in the end since our rangers were able to heal over the red bar here to 73%. But still, as you can see, the agitated state did appear here. So I was actually trying to heal up the raptor a little bit further, but then I realised that I couldn't. It's actually down to the raptor itself to go and eat some food and drink some water. At which point I decided I'll help it out by putting a little bit more water down. But can't do anything at the moment because it's still trying to break through a fence. So hopefully this reinforcement is just going to stop it from going too far. And there we have it. The agitation state has gone. The comfort is back at 100%. Which means we should be good to go now to finish this mission. So this would have been a lot easier for me if I'd actually gone ahead and summoned the rangers immediately after I let the velociraptor into this pen. Uh, I actually waited about a minute or so because I was tracking the wrong raptor th thinking it was back to full health when it wasn't. So as you can see the food and water are both very low here. It's going to go and eat now which is the first step. But there's no water nearby, so I do need to just create or try and create a little bit around. Although it looks like we're about to complete the mission. And this is the final objective of the mission. So there we have it then, guys. So the trick to this mission, it is a, it is a bit of a nasty one, is to be prepared to handle the very next objective, like, before it actually even happens. So make sure you start off with your small enclosure and your two dinosaurs, Dilophosaurus, Velociraptor, ready to go. And as soon as one wins the fight, quickly break the other fence open for the other one to go into the pen with the others. And very, very quickly react then at that point by having the rangers come to heal it and making sure there's food and water for it to be restored back to full health or you're going to find yourself in big doo-doos. Now, it seems the only thing in the way of this Velociraptor's life and death is the fact that it needs to drink water. So your guess is as good as mine as to why it gets to the water that I plonked down here and just decides to run through it, not actually drinking from it. Yeah, that's down to some poor AI, I've got to be honest with you. So hopefully that's something that's going to be fixed in an upcoming patch to the game. Uh, but for now, I'm literally at the mercy of the AI actually getting this Raptor to go ahead and drink from this pool here. Which, fortunately, eventually it does. But anyway, that's the mission completed. And that's how you can collect raptors, breed them, and keep them successfully in your park on Island 2. So I hope this video has been a help to you guys. If it has, don't forget to leave a like and come back soon as we carry on with more Jurassic World evolution. And we'll see what Island 3 has in store for us. Take care all. See you next time.